Hi, my name is Madhusudan Shetty and you and I are going to venture into this beautiful world of mathematics beginning with this chapter called as data handling. Now when I say data handling, the first question that comes to your mind is what is data? Now when I say data, data can mean it's nothing but collection of information and information could be in the form of numbers, in the form of words, in the form of measurement or it could be mere observation. Now this is data. So in our day to day life, we do come across a lot of data. But how do we handle this data? Why do we need to handle data? Let's take an example over here. Let's say the sports ministry wants to conduct a survey of how many people like different types of sports. Now so they go into the society. Now India having a population of 1.2 billion and more, it's impossible to go and ask everyone. So what we do is we conduct a sample. We take few set of people and we call this as the random sample. And now we are going to conduct a survey of these people. Now in our list, what we do is in the survey, we categorize the games into four. So we say the games which people generally like are cricket, football, tennis, and the last miscellaneous is others. Now this, in this others, we may use badminton or maybe basketball, baseball, etc. So what do we do? We go and ask the first person in this sample and we ask him what do you like and that person says I like football. So what do we do? Corresponding to the column of football we write okay one person likes football so we can see number one there. Now we go and ask the second person. The second person says I like tennis. So what do we do? In this survey sheet we write corresponding to tennis one person. That's it. Now the next person says, I like football again. So what do we do? Corresponding to football, we write the second person here likes football. So the football says we have the second person. Now we go and asking the next person. The next person says, I'm a big fan of Virat Kohli and I like cricket. So what do we do? Corresponding to cricket, we write one. The next person and tells me, I like cricket again. So the next person's number is two. So we write two corresponding to cricket. So what do we see is in this sample where we interviewed five people, we have two persons who like cricket, two persons who like football, and one person who likes tennis. Easy to find. But what happens when we keep on interviewing more and more people? Let's see what does the next person say. The next person says, I like badminton. So where do we include this person? in the category of others because she likes badminton. Okay, we ask the next person. The next person says, I like football. So we write number three corresponding to football. But don't you realize that as the number goes on increasing, it becomes little troublesome to keep on adding numbers to this list. And at the end, it becomes little troublesome. So what we do is we innovate. We innovate by going for a very beautiful method of recording this data, or we should say handling this data. So what do we do? What we do here is that for the first person, if the first person says like football, we do put a simple vertical bar corresponding to football. As you can see it over here on the screen. Now when the second person says I like tennis, so corresponding to tennis, we put a vertical line, a bar, as you can see over here. Now the next person says I like football. So what we do is instead of writing number two corresponding to this vertical bar, we put one more vertical bar. Seems easy. In the same way, the next person says cricket. So we put one vertical bar corresponding to cricket. The next person says I like badminton examples. So we put others may one vertical bar. And the next person says football. So we put one more for football. Now you can see it's very easy, right? So one more tennis. So cricket, we have one person. Football, we have four persons. Tennis, we have two persons. And others, we have one person. Now this seems to be very easy. But what happens if we ask the next person and the next person says, I like football. So we have the fifth person who likes football. So for this fifth person, we simply put a slanting bar across these four vertical bars in this way. Now you may ask me, what's the harm in putting one more vertical bar next to four? But do you see, if we just keep on adding vertical bars, at some point of time, the data becomes so cumbersome, it becomes very difficult to actually count it. You see this example. 
So for our convenience, what we do is, after the fourth bar, we simply put a slanting line crossing this vertical bars. So this seems very easy. So the final data, if it looks this way, now we can read it very easily. Cricket, we have, as you can see, okay, this method is called as the method of tally marks. Simple method, just writing the vertical bars and putting a cross for the fifth bar, this method of representation is called as tally marks. So now when we count for cricket, we have 5 plus 5, that comes to how much? 10, so easy to count. The next for football, so what do we see for football? The number of people playing football are 5 plus 5 plus 3, that is 13. And for tennis, we have only two. And lastly, for others, what we can see is we have again how much? Four? Five? Yes, five. And now it's so easy to count. 10 plus 13 plus 2 plus 5 is 30. And that many number of people are playing these games according to the survey.